For many people who pass him by here in Philadelphia's Fairmont Park between the Schuylkill and Kelly Drive that is named in his honor, he is just a nameless statue. But for Daniel Boyne, John B. Kelly is much more than that. Born at the turn of the century as a son of Irish immigrants, he made himself a fortune in the bricklaying business, was a three-time gold medal Olympic athlete, and also a local politician in Philadelphia. As director of recreational rowing at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Daniel Boyne is well aware that John B. Kelly was the greatest rower in U.S. history. But that honor did not come easy. As an Irish American, he fought his way out of poverty and overcame class prejudice to first become an Olympic hero. And then a businessman, as Kelly Brickworks helped build JFK Stadium, the Philadelphia Free Library, and the United Nations. It was a pretty far-ranging or far-reaching uh, business, the largest, I believe, on the eastern seaboard. John B. Kelly was also the father of Grace Kelly, movie star and later the Princess of Monaco. But just as important to John B. were the rowing victories of his son, Jack Kelly. And now, his grandson, John B. Kelly III, and his son, Nick, continue the family's rowing tradition here on the Schuylkill River at the Vesper Boat Club, where John B. III is president. My grandfather was a member here, uh, my uh, dad was a member, and, uh, and now I am, and, and my son's a member as well. They are all part of a legacy that started almost a century ago. This is a story that Daniel Boyne writes about in his new book, Kelly, A Father, A Son, An American Quest. In it, he focuses on the family patriarch, John B., and his son, Jack. I think it's remarkable what they accomplished in the field of rowing. I don't think any individual has equaled what either one of them has done, at least here in the United States. And so their legacy is huge. I decided to write about that, them because it's an important story. It's an important family whose legends and stories really had not been collected into a single narrative structure. Bits and pieces, certainly, and everybody likes to write about Grace Kelly. But even Grace said she wouldn't write her autobiography when she was asked, but she would consider writing about her father because his life is so remarkable. He was born in 1889, the son of Irish-American immigrants who lived in the working class East Falls section of Philadelphia. His birth came 45 years after a deadly ride in South Philadelphia between Irish Catholics and their Protestant neighbors. The riot left 15 dead and a parish church in ruins. Back then, Philadelphia was not the city of brotherly love if you were a working class Irish Catholic. This was the kind of prejudice that John B's parents taught their children to overcome. And John B learned that lesson very well. What he achieved in his short period of time was immense. His first achievement was in rowing. That in the 19th century was a sport. Which was hugely popular, mainly because of the professionals that would have these staged events. Thousands of spectators, thousands of dollars were bet were on the line. Sometimes purses of two, three, four, five thousand dollars, which in those days was, you could live off it for a few years. And in terms of comparing it to other sports, it was up there as one of the top spectator sports. But it wasn't the kind of sport that rowing committees wanted. And they decided that the professionalism was corrupting the sport and decided to forbid amateurs or to say that anyone who was an amateur could not make money off the sport. And what happened then was, of course, it changed the sport but that did not change John B. Kelly's determination to race for Olympic gold by rowing for the Vesper Boat Club. Philadelphia was really the hotbed of rowing activity, the cradle of the sport during those times, where the collection of boathouses, the excitement, the enthusiasm for the sport gave birth to many, many medals and champions. But nobody equaled the three gold medals won by John B. in the 1920 and 1924 Olympics or his 126 straight victories in a single skull. But one victory eluded him, and that was at the Henley Royal Regatta's Diamond Skulls in England, where John B. was not allowed to compete. Because he worked with his hands, 
and was not considered a gentleman or an amateur uh, in the eyes of the British. Laborers, mechanics, and artisans were forbidden by the British, the English, from rowing in their amateur events. It was class prejudice cloaked in a gentleman's code, and John B. decided to get even through his son, Jack, who won the Diamond Skulls at the Henley in 1947 and again in 1949. A gentleman from the University of Pennsylvania simply rode away with the diamonds. His name? J.B. Kelly. Jack's son, John B. Kelly III, remembers it well. Oh, well, that was just a huge thing for uh, my dad to win Henley and, uh, you know, with the, my grandfather having been, not, been denied entry. It was a, uh, you know, triumph of the Irish over the British <laughs> again and, uh, and of, uh, you know, working men over uh, the aristocracy. He was not just winning a boat race, he was uh, proven a point. In their lifetimes, both father and son proved points that helped change the sport of rowing for the better. And what was the biggest change of all? In terms of actual rowing, not much has changed, uh, which is one of the beauties of it. It's a very traditional sport. Uh, one of the, probably the biggest change in the sport overall, though, is uh, women. Starting in 1976, when the first women rowed in the Olympic Games, the number of women rowing has grown tremendously, thanks in great part to Title IX legislation that in 1972 required universities receiving federal dollars to level the playing field for men and women in sport. The results can be seen right here in a typical weekend regatta being held along the Cooper River in Camden County, New Jersey. Title IX has changed the playing field for women's rowing hugely. It's really changed the sport. John B. Kelly, who fought against class prejudice, no doubt would have approved the growth of his beloved sport through Title IX. And this weekend at the Dad Val Regatta, you can see how far this sport has grown as rowers of both genders from every ethnic, economic, racial, and religious background compete in the largest rowing event in America. And if you want to meet John B. Kelly, he's waiting for you at the finish line.